three Olympic Games, four gold medals, two silver and two bronze, Allison Schmidt certainly knows the high of winning on the world's biggest stage. It's a moment of happiness, not, not necessarily the medal itself or the record itself. It's everything, it's the journey that it took to get there. She also knows the low that can come after. I was grateful for all the success. I was grateful for all the support I had back home and all over the country. I was um, very thankful for my life, but at the same time, if I complained about anything, I felt or said something about how I was truly feeling at that time, um, I felt like I was complaining. To the outside world, life seemed ideal. Medals, success, living the dream of so many young athletes. But Allison was struggling on the inside. I did feel isolated and I think I continued to isolate myself by not wanting to seem like I was complaining. So uh, I think that in my mind, the best solution was to not say anything and to keep it all in. She's right. Too often, we keep it to ourselves. I've known many other Olympians who've struggled in the same way. The post-Olympic blues are a very real thing. I had this idea of after the Olympics, I would just go lay on a beach somewhere because we'd been working for 20 years towards this goal and I just needed a break. And I found really quickly that I lacked this sense of purpose. And I would wake up, I would be in my bed, and usually, you know, my alarm would be going off at 6 o'clock in the morning. I would know where I had to be, what time I had to be there, what I was going to do that day, what sort of indicators there were to say, like, okay, well, this was a successful day. And so I'd wake up sleeping in, which you think, amazing, everyone wants to sleep <laughs> in. And I would just, like, unexpectedly cry because there was just no reason for me to get out of bed. Or there was no, there was nothing waiting for me that I had to do. Yeah. And it took me by surprise. Well, thank you for sharing that, too. Thank you. Yeah. I think for me personally, to have success and then work towards more success and then work towards more success and realize maybe previously I thought that success was going to bring me all the happiness I ever wanted and it was going to fix all my problems in life. And then you get there and you sort of think, okay, that's awesome, but nothing is really different. Is that something that's been a part of your experience as well? Uh, for sure, and I think you definitely explained that correctly. It's it's like stairs, and every stair we keep going up and up, and when we get to the top of the stairs, yeah, that is the Olympics, yeah, that is winning a gold medal. Um, but what is shown on TV is the happiness, the happy moments, the smiles, the, te the happy tears, the winning. Um, what's not ever shown is the hard work that I got to take there, um, or the losing, or the not making finals, or the tears of sadness. Um, I think that's never shown on TV, so what everyone back home or everyone around the world is watching is the happiness, and that's awesome. I want to be there. That's really cool. Even though many of us, many female athletes, are empowered through our experience in sport, by only talking about the good side of things, I think we're not doing justice to like future generations who aren't fully understanding what it means to overcome and push through the challenges. And I think by sharing a little bit of our own big picture, um, I think we are um, creating a better understanding and appreciation, I hope, for younger generations of especially female athletes. Yeah, I completely agree with you and I hope that someone watching this realizes that a bad day doesn't mean you have a bad life. Um, a bad week doesn't mean you have a bad life. Um, you can get out of it and know that even us who are seen as portrayed as smiling on TV, looking like we have all the glory, all the fame on TV, um, doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have battles of our own, um, that we don't have bad days of our own. Allison is sharing her story to help and inspire others. She's also focused on herself, getting back to a place where she feels most at home, the pool. My goal definitely is mental health right now, and that's my number one goal. Um, that's why I'm back in school. So I love speaking about it. Um, whatever happens with swimming, of course the love is still there. As I am back swimming with the team, there's kind of a new refound love for the sport again, and it's rejuvenated. and. I am 27, training with some 18-year-olds, but I feel young again, and I love it, so I think 
everyone knows how tough life can be, how tough everyday life can be, and just knowing that for two hours or four hours out of the day that you can all come together and put your head in the water. Allison feels her purpose is to share this very important message. It's okay not to be okay. We both hope that by sharing our stories, our voices, and that message will be heard. When, you're on, when we're honest about what we're going through in our personal careers and experiences, I think it's so much more impactful because it's something that everyone goes through. Yes. Yeah. And it's cool to know that you can positively impact not just like young swimmers or young figure skaters, but hopefully impact positively um, like young people in, in every facet. Yeah. So. Awesome. awesome. Thank you Great. so much for yeah. making no, the time. Thank you. Meryl Davis, Local 4.